Hello, welcome to the shed. Yep, from my shed. Following government guidelines, if I'm not going out, I'm spending time in my shed. And I'm sure with the lockdown, a lot of us are in the same situation. Can't wait to get back out in the woods. That time will come. We don't know when, but D-Day will happen and we'll all be allowed back out in the woods. What I wanna do over the next few videos, the next few weeks, is come up with some projects, stuff that you can make at home, in your shed, wherever, with materials that you can get hold of, in readiness, for when D-Day finally comes and we can get back out in the woods. So in my previous video, I gave you some links to some of my simple stick projects. Projects that can be done in the woods, but they can also be done anywhere you like. It could be in your shed, it can be in your garden, it could even be in your living room. This video, we're gonna look at something that is specific that you can do at home. So this project is going to be something that centres around food and our ability to prepare food when we're out in the woods. Because I figure when we finally do get out in the woods, we're probably going to want to get a fire going, get something to eat with some friends, probably have a few bevies. So the project we're going to look at is a wannigan. And this is a wannigan. It's a box that you store your kitchen utensils, your spices, all the ancillary stuff that we use while we're cooking out in the woods. This one's quite big. This is one that I use when I'm running courses and it's has got everything I need, but it's quite bulky and it usually is transported in a vehicle. In here, well, I have all sorts of stuff. A big knife. I've got other knives in there for chopping and peeling and preparing vegetables. I've got peelers, I've got a tin opener, I've got a spice rack. I've got my recipe book. I've got a chopping board. I've got different oils, vinegars, spoons, bowls, colanders, all the bits and pieces that I need to create my own kitchen out in the woods. Downside with this, it's big and heavy and not everyone wants to carry one. How about something that's smaller, lighter, and something you can put together and you can put in your rucksack ready for when D-Day comes. So what I thought we'd do in this video is we'd put together our own mini wagon, Something that you don't need a vehicle to carry, something you can pop in your rucksack, but still gives you everything you need to create your own outdoor kitchen. So the first thing I figured we need is something to carry it in. It needs to be small, needs to be lightweight, and it needs to be versatile. It needs to be multifunctional if we're gonna keep the weight and the size down. And what I found was this. This is a little lunch box from Wilco's. And I'll put a link for these down below in the description. What I like about it is it's versatile. So it can be used not just as the container to carry it in, also, the lid becomes your chopping board, uh, chopping board, made from bamboo, and it's absolutely ideal. It's a good size, and if I've got to prepare any food at all that needs to be chopped, rather than working on the floor or balancing it on a log, I've now got a little chopping board. The bowl itself, stainless steel, it's quite a good size. Once I've prepped food on the chopping board, I can then put it into here. I can also use this as a mixing bowl. So if I'm making up dampers, etc., it can all go into this. Now, if you think back to my big wagon, in there, as well as a chopping board and a mixing bowl, there is also a colander because I need that for draining off vegetables once I've cooked them, or if I'm washing stuff off, or if I'm cooking rice or pasta, I need that colander. So how is I gonna fit a colander in that little container? Well, it's a fairly simple solution. <clears throat> and it's one of these. 
And this is a little mesh bag. A lot of the supermarkets a few years ago did away with the little plastic bags on the veg, veg counters. Instead, they put these up for sale. And they're about 30p, I think. And they are super useful, super versatile. As well as using it as a colander, I can also use it as a storage bag. So if I've gathered stuff, I can pop it in here, draw the top up, hang it up in the tree so it's nice and safe and all contained. It's also super, super lightweight and super compact, which is what we want for our little kit. Also in my wannigan, there was a selection of spoons, etc. Well, I tend to carry a spoon in my brew kit anyway, so I don't think I need to put an extra spoon in. But something that is useful is something like this, is a little spatula. And these are these little cheapy wooden sets that you can buy in most supermarkets, or indeed online. The good thing with these is they're flat, so they're easy to pack. And because they're made of wood, I can scale it down so it fits perfectly into the little container. Now also in my big wagon, there was a dedicated set of cooking knives. So there was a big chopping knife, there's a peeling knife, a little paring knife. There's also some vegetable peelers. Well, in my little box, I haven't got room for the luxury of all of those, but I still should have a little dedicated food prep knife. So I put this one in. And this one is my little open L garden knife. Stainless steel blade that locks in place. It's a nice slim profile. The Scandi ones are great for woodwork and also good for food prep. Something like this with a nice flat grind on it is absolutely ideal for food prep. The stainless steel blade won't stain. The wooden handle, a lot of people say, oh, wooden handles, they harbour germs, etc. Well, if you work nice and clean and you make sure your stuff's washed up, you shouldn't get a problem with it. I certainly never have. So that is my little knife solution to go into my box. Next up, you'll also remember in my wannigan there was some olive oil and some cider vinegar. And all I've done is I've just put these in these little Nalgene bowls and that's enough for a trip out. The cider vinegar, olive oil, great for cooking in with our olive oil. We can also use that for dressing leaves, etc. And the vinegar is very good for add into different sauces, etc., to give it that sharpness, that little zing. It's also very good if you're preparing wild meat. What I tend to do is dice the meat up, cover it with a little bit of water and add some vinegar and it just starts the process of breaking the fibers in the meat down. You can leave it to soak in there for a couple of hours before stewing it and it helps make it that little bit more tender. Again, this can be mixed with the olive oil and maybe some of the herbs, etc to make up a dressing to go on wild leaves. Now also in that wannigan, I had lots of different herbs and spices, jars like this in fact. Well, these, number one, weigh quite a bit, but also the ones that are in my wannigan have been in there for quite some time because you don't actually use a great deal of this while you are cooking. So what I did, was I've got some little jars. And I've got these off Amazon. Uh, they came in a box of 12, I think it is, and I'll put the link in the description box below. And it's just enough for a trip out. They are made of glass, so we have got to be a little bit careful with them, but then they're gonna be stored inside our little metal wannigan box. What we do need to think about is if we're using that box for mixing, so it's used as a bowl, what are we gonna do with these? So came up with an old solution. And that is this. All it is, is a piece 
polypropylene webbing folded in two and then stitched at various points just wide enough so that I can fit my spices in each of those loops. This strip uh, was about 850 mil folded in two and then each of these are 39 mil apart and that makes it just big enough to hold your little spice jars. Like so. I put a little loop on the top so that while I am cooking, if the bowl is in use, this can be hung up, which keeps all my spices together and up off the ground. So that's the contents of the wannigan, and with those few bits and pieces, I can achieve everything with that mini version that I can with the main full-sized wannigan. It's all pretty compact and it fits nicely together and as I said it will slip away into the side pocket on your rucksack ready for your next trip out to the woods. Yes there is no recipe book in there but then you don't need it because you've got your mobile phone and if you've got your mobile phone you can whip onto YouTube and you can go onto my channel and you can look up the various recipes etc that I've already uploaded so they're there as your aid memoir your virtual recipe book so there you go the first of my pandemic projects <coughs> things to come out of the shed my mini wannigan give it a go as I said I'll put the links for everything in the description box down below give it a try it's going to be one of these little things you can put together, it won't take you very long to do. It will be there ready for when this is all over and we can finally get back out into the woods. Now if you've enjoyed this video then remember hit that like button. You could also share it, I'm sure there's quite a few people out there who would probably appreciate it. So if you enjoyed it, share it with someone else. You can also pop over to Instagram, follow me over there on greencraft uh, underscore zero one. Facebook, playing greencraft. You could also pop over to the greencraft shop. I'll put the link in the description box below and see how you can support the channel. Have a look at some of the stuff that I've got for sale over there, whether it's my little bookmarks, my greencraft patches, my mugs, all of those things. If you want to get involved with supporting the channel, then pop over to Patreon. I have a Patreon page and have a look at becoming a patron. Again, the links will all appear in the description box down below. I've been Neil and until next time, stay safe. <laughs>